The information and views expressed by our host or guests on the Unlock Potential podcast are their own, and not a substitute for professional medical or fitness advice. Always consult with qualified healthcare or fitness professionals before starting any new exercise program or making changes to your current routine. We should not be in the middle of this workout thinking the workout is killing us. Mm. What's feeling like it's killing us is our mindset saying, I should be better than I am right now. Uh, I should be better than I am right now. That's what fucking kills people. Mm -hmm. Instead of, this is what I'm capable of right now. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm capable of right now, over and over and over. Hello, and welcome to season two of Unlock Potential. I'm Brian Delaney. Our focus this season is fitness. I'll be joined by Dr. Corey Duvall, who's going to guide us through his protocol for getting into your best shape so we can live our best lives and serve others well. All right. Hello and welcome, everybody. This is episode 24 of season two of Unlock Potential. Hope you're doing awesome today. Thank you for joining us and investing the time that you have here for yourself uh, so that you can grow stronger, fitter, more equipped to serve, more creative in your life, have more energy to show up, better relationships. Whatever that is, it fits the bill here and we'll show you how how you can start doing the work that's gonna get you there. We're not gonna get you there. We're just gonna be the guides by the side as we're helping others just like ourselves along this journey to being optimal, right? Being optimal, having that optimal fitness, optimal ability to serve people outside the gym, optimally useful. Exactly. Yep, awesome. Uh, I've got my uh, co-host, my uh, uh, business partner, and uh, and really coach, Uh, that's, that's it. So I'm here to learn just as much as you are. Uh, Mr. Corey Duvall, Dr. Corey Duvall, here to help us break down some distinctions and differences. I feel like this could be an episode where we get into controversy, uh-huh. um, and we may stay out of it, but let's do our best to stay in it. Let's do our best to awesome. <laughs> get in it. So, awesome. uh, thanks for being here once again. Yeah, brother. And uh, continuing to grow, uh, grow me, grow this awesome community of people uh, that I get to be a part of, learn from, and serve to. Yes, brother. I'm yeah. happy to be here. Awesome. Um, so. This conversation actually came up uh, in, in this very kind of time relevant way as uh, as CrossFit is doing their CrossFit Open. Uh-huh. And uh, we're, ne- we're never setting up in opposition to what CrossFit does because a lot of the basis for your frameworks, your experience, as well as uh, the things that you have coached me and taught me how to do yes. have, co- have come from CrossFit. Exactly. Have come from 100 words on uh, fitness in 100 words. Yes. Right. Have come from... Um, you're going to, uh, from Greg Glassman exactly, and some of these pioneers of these movements Yes, and uh, your methodology has taken all the best parts and left the rest. Exactly. Right. And so as we're doing these open workouts, as I was getting into them, I noticed a difference between what CrossFit prescribed and what the stay active method was prescribing. And I wanted to know kind of some of these differences. I got some of them, but start to break open some of these differences what makes the stay active method uh, unique, sure, but more useful, more effective for helping people to get more of what they want. Um, So I'd love to just uh, start there. Uh, Like what's your, what's your sense of what CrossFit is doing with those open workouts and where might people notice uh, the biggest distinctions that can cause real differences in outcome? Yeah. So I would love to first say that we stand on the shoulders of giants. That's right. Which means everything that came before us raised us up to the point where we could see a little further beyond the horizon. Mm -hmm. And so everything that I do is based deeply in my last 17 years of following CrossFit methodology. Mm -hmm. When I heard Greg Glassman first speak, when I read those early CrossFit journals, so much of that spoke to me and changed my perspective that it deeply influences me. I've just made a few tweaks to things that I think is going to guide more of us further in the long run. And that's what we're looking to do. That's awesome. That's awesome. One of the differences that I noticed in uh, the workout Uh 24.1, which for those people who aren't inside the inside baseball, right? uh, The way CrossFit prescribed that was it was a dumbbell exercise as well as a uh, burpee exercise. So it started off 21 dumbbell snatches, which means from the ground to overhead, 
Mm -hmm. uh, 21 times with the left arm, mm -hmm. doing burpees with a lateral jump yep. over, or at least a lateral movement over the dumbbell. Mm -hmm. um, you had 21 of those burpees, 21 more snatches with that uh, dumbbell yep. using the alternating arm, using the right arm, yep. followed by 21 burpees. Then it was 15 mm -hmm. snatches on the left arm, 15 burpees, 15 snatches right arm, 15 burpees, yep. nine snatches left arm, nine burpees, nine snatches, right arm, nine burpees yes. with a 15 minute time cap. Mm -hmm. Okay. 15 minute, meaning that's as much time. So how many ever rounds, how many ever repetitions you got before that you counted. Yep. If you went over that, that didn't work. Mm -hmm. So let's take that and let's draw some distinctions toward the daily original workout yep. from the stay active method. Yeah. How is it different from there? And I, I feel like you talking about those movements is uh -huh. going to be way more helpful and instructive for everybody. Totally. So first, I try to name exercises so that they are as inclusive as possible and they are boiled down to the essence. So in fitness, there has been kind of this like inside language. Mm -hmm. Somebody from the outside would need to be told what a dumbbell snatch is. Somebody from the outside would be, need to be told what a burpee is, mm. but we name the exercises so that it's inclusive so that as soon as people come in, they know the essence of the exercise and that opens up the possibilities for different people to do the same thing different ways. So instead of calling it a dumbbell snatch, we say one arm, dumbbell, ground to overhead. Mm. So you know, oh, I'm gonna take this dumbbell off the ground I'm going to bring it up overhead. Now, if I pause in my hip, if I pause in my shoulder, whatever I need to do to get that dumbbell up overhead, and then I bring it right back down to the ground. Instead of calling something a burpee, we call it a chest down, get up, face down, get up. What does that mean? Get face down on the ground, get up to standing, get face down on the ground, get up to standing. And so what I noticed was that people would start to limit what they were doing based on what it looked like because of what they were told it was supposed to look like. Okay. So they start altering how they would naturally do a dumbbell snatch comfortably in order to do it correctly. Mm. So they would have shoulder pain and they would be focused on what it looked like to the coach suffering through some shoulder pain because it looked right. Mm. But if they adjusted how they did it, it would feel better. Mm. And if they adjusted how they did it so it felt better, it might look different to the coach. And the coach might say, hey, you're doing that wrong. Correct them. They go back to doing it the other way. Shoulder hurts. So now we're drawing this distinction between what the coach thinks is correct mm. and what the client is feeling internally. Mm. And I wanted to say, hey, we've got to get the client feeling right internally and then adjust from there. So, so why not just less snatches? Because what you're saying is you're really focused on the starting point and the ending point. Exactly. How they get there uh -huh. doesn't matter, but the name snatch in, implies that it has to move from the ground to overhead in one continuous motion. Exactly. Whereas dumbbell floor to overhead, uh -huh. there, there's a lot of opportunities Exactly. In the midst there. There's a lot of transitions that can be added to increase that client's comfort, even though it may increase that coach's discomfort with how it looks. Yes. Yeah. Talk, talk a little bit about that. Yeah, that's really good. So the only reason we know why a movement might look correct mm -hmm. is because somebody trained consistently for many, many years as their body evolved mm. to the point where they became the top of their sport. And then everybody looked at how the person was moving at the top of their sport and said, I need to look like that. Mm. And so the coaches said, I need all of my clients to look like that. So they start trying to get all of their clients to look like somebody who has trained specifically for that for 20 years, mm. instead of saying, hey, I need my clients to train for 20 years. 
Uh, and what do they need to do to train for 20 years? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> That's a big difference. Yeah, it's a huge difference. Wow. And so if I start to say, your snatch doesn't look correct, yep. don't do it until it looks correct, mm -hmm. they start to become resistant to the exercise. Okay. Or if we start saying, that looks correct, do it that way, but internally they're suffering with damage and discomfort, they're going to eventually get resistant to the exercise and not come back. Mm -hmm. So what do we need to do? We need to get them to move through a range of motion in a way that their structure needs. And if they get to the limit of what they are capable of, their snatch will probably look more like the elites hmm. with whatever differences their body happens to need. Hmm. Okay. All right. Very good. Very good. Now, um, do you want to get into do you want to get into hand specification versus not hand specification or did you want to go to something else? Yeah, we could do that. Okay. Uh, as far as a competition goes, you're going to set the parameters and you've got to do it like everybody else. Mm -hmm. That's so that we can compare one person to another in this format the way it was structured. If I was working in the field and I was using a pickaxe I wouldn't force myself to do the pickaxe 21 times one way and 21 times the other way. I wouldn't alternate every single time. Mm -hmm. I would do one way until I got a little tired and I would shake it out. And then I would do the other way until I got a little tired and then I would shake it out and I would just keep at it that way. Mm -hmm. And so when I'm writing workouts for the stay active method, when I'm designing exercises and coaching people through, I want them to do whatever allows them to get the most work done comfortably in whatever time frame we're looking at. Mm -hmm. Not a specific every other hand, not a specific this number of times here and this number of times there. So less emphasis because you use these three words and they become a real, uh, they've become a framework for my whole life, the natural, difficult, and impressive. Yep. And if we just focus in on difficult, uh -huh. we create problems. Right. Right. But what you're referring to more is like, let's emphasize the natural. Uh huh. Let's emphasize the natural way that we would normally do things. It both in and out of the gym, like it, uh -huh. it, it doesn't it, that that's not a real deal. And by creating unnecessary layers of difficulty, yep, we take away from the movement and the opportunities in it. Exactly. Okay. Yep. Okay. That makes. That makes sense to me. Yeah, that's a perfect way of putting it. And then the burpee, people have a lot of, this is what a burpee is supposed to look like. Yep. It's supposed to be a push-up. It's supposed to be a plank. It's supposed to be a et cetera. Well, if they aren't capable mm -hmm. of doing it to that level, mm -hmm. if they aren't capable of doing it in a way that looks correct, they start to think that they're doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. And if they feel like they're doing it wrong, they don't want to keep doing something that feels wrong. It's only a matter of time. Uh-huh. Eventually, they don't come back. Yeah. Now, what do I want those people to do? I want them to get on the ground, I want them, and I want them to get up. Mm -hmm. Because a direct measure of how long and how independent we are going to be as we age is how easily we get down on the ground and we get back up. Mm. So if I tell somebody the way they're getting on the ground and back up is wrong and they stop doing it, guess what happens? They get worse at it. Yeah. If I say, hey, get down on the ground and get back up. Awesome job. Can you do it quicker? Oh, that's perfect. Go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then they get better and better and better at whatever style they're doing. And over time, they eventually look like other people who are doing the fastest burpees. Yeah. Absolutely. Because it just becomes quicker and easier for them uh -huh. to do it in a much more fluid way. Uh -huh. But that fluid way isn't available to them at the start. Exactly. Right? Or we at least don't know it is uh -huh. until we ask them to make that movement. Uh -huh. Yeah. And I, I love that. The more you tell them, it, oh, that's the wrong way. That's the wrong way. And if it's outside their capacity, they're going to do less and less over time uh -huh. instead of uh, utilizing the stay active method, which promotes more and more over time and more comfortability, more explosive up uh -huh. against gravity, yes. more uh, more slowly touch, touch so softly with gravity, more exactly. of that, which means more control on the way up, more control uh, on the way down, uh -huh. more strength on the way up, more balance and coordination on the way down. Exactly. Yep, I, I, that, that makes a lot of sense. What, what about, what about, I think this is the right time because we're going through hand or uh, distinctions between uh -huh. sides of our body. Yep. 
What about the person who would say to you, Corey, and I know we talked a little bit about this, but Corey, isn't that going to cause muscle imbalances? <clears throat> My right arm is dominant. I can, I can go through that. I, I could just do all 21 pounds and I'm going to get our, all 21, uh, 21 reps for all the rounds, I'm going to get through it a lot quicker on my right hand than I will on my left. Right. Right. Isn't that going to cause me to be walking around with one giant, <laughs> one giant shoulder, one giant arm, you know? Yes. Um, so, so how does it, how does that figure in? Yeah. So first we need to look at where we're going. Mm -hmm. We're going to the fittest physical human they can be, so they are most helpful to others. Mm -hmm. That's going to maximize the capacity of each arm. Mm. They won't be fit if they only are capable of one arm and zero capability on the other. Mm -hmm. So we know that as we're headed towards the fittest we can be, mm -hmm. both arms will reach their upper limit. Mm. And so the journey to get there cannot be exactly similar side to side to side every step of the way. Yeah. You're going to have a little ebb and flow left and right over time. Mm -hmm. So let's say, for example, they do that daily original workout, the CrossFit open with all of the repetitions on their right side. Mm -hmm. And two days later, they're taking on some strength work. Guess what's going to happen? That right side is going to be a little more tired. Mm -hmm. Guess what's going to happen? They're setting their goal to be as fit as they can be. They're going to do more on the left to help out the right that's tired. Mm -hmm. That's so good. And over time, the left catches up. Now the left exceeds. Now the left gets tired and they're back to the right. And over time, both climb. So we don't, w what you're moving away from is unnaturally casting ourselves in one direction, unnecessarily limiting one side in order to exaggerate the other or exaggerating the other in order to limit the other. You're saying the body takes care of that inside of the movement with the goal of being the fittest version of themselves, most able to serve. Yes, exactly. Okay. Yep. All right. That's great. That's great. Um, yeah. What, what would you say the, the next distinction would be between the WOD and the DAO, the daily original workout? Yeah. So Greg Glassman took the workout of the day, mm -hmm. uh, a single exercise or a few exercises in circuit fashion or a bunch of repetitions of one and then a bunch of the other and the next and the next in a chipper format. Mm -hmm. And he said, we're going to put a score on this. Mm -hmm. And the score that you get on today's and the score that you get on tomorrow's and the score that you get on uh, the next day, if we were to repeat that sometime in the future and your scores were better, that means you're a fitter human being. Mm. So a comparison of self now to a comparison of self later, if you're scoring better, you're a fitter human being. Mm -hmm. Totally made sense. I bought into it. I thought it was great. Yep. However... If we get too short-sighted at my score compared to your score today, mm -hmm. and we start comparing our scores against each other, mm. we start saying, oh, you're first place, I'm second place. I see. You're good, I'm bad. Mm. You're the winner, I'm the loser. Mm -hmm. And that comparison starts to feed the ego of, can I short some reps? and get ahead. That will never happen <laughs> in a CrossFit workout. There is no possible way that you would see people who only touch one side of the dumbbell on the 24.1 or don't extend their hip flexors uh, or don't have their head behind the bar in 24.2. There is absolutely no way. The idea that inside of a snatch workout that somebody would go below, uh, not go below power, parallel, that is absolutely crazy. Uh -huh. <laughs> but that's it. You're, we, you're telling us precisely what we're seeing. Yes, exactly. We're seeing people short uh -huh. their own possible capacity exactly. in order to beat someone else's. Exactly. This is this is not about this is not this whole situation. It's not being a form it's not being a form junkie. Yeah. It's not about that. Uh -huh. It's about seeing people who are exceptionally fit who have who functionally based on what i'm seeing have less hip flexor movement than i do uh-huh that is not inspiring exactly 
I want to see these people because I know if I saw their full expression, uh -huh. they would probably have more hip flexor extension. Yeah. They would be able to drive their head further back so that they weren't just flexing the lower part of the back, but they were squeezing the glutes exactly. as that came in and they were getting their full core engaged and they were getting their full body, but uh -huh. they weren't short shorting one of those dumbbells or leaving their uh, shoulders rolled forward uh -huh. in a way that is not great for your physiology when it comes to that. Uh -huh. And that's what happens is because my best and your best, well, they should they should be compared in the way of like, hey, how much did you grow from your last best? Uh -huh. And how much did I grow from my last best? Uh -huh. And now we have a proper framework to start being able to encourage and inspire other people. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That, that, I, I just want to point that out. And I don't think it's a problem with CrossFit. I don't think no. it's a problem with, uh, with uh, the principles that were taught. I think it's a problem with uh, it's in the nature of the problem of competing my score versus your score. Exactly. In a way that's in a way that's extractive. Yes. If you're tired of feeling low on energy and settling for the scraps, it's time for your personal revolution. We are helping people go from the person that they have been to the person they were truly meant to be and helping people get to the next level in their life, their business and their relationships. Follow us. So Greg Glassman had a phrase, uh, men will die for points. Mm. And the idea was that so much of our culture has gotten easy in our physical life mm -hmm. that we embrace lethargy and sloth. Okay. So much of our physical life has gotten easy. And so we don't challenge ourselves and we don't push ourselves. Mm -hmm. Well, the solution to underdoing is not overdoing. Mm. So to say men will die for points. So we're going to put points on the board and have everybody race for those points. That's not the solution to underdoing. Hmm. The solution is for your peers to see you make legitimate progress hmm. for your energy and your presence to change around them mm -hmm. in a way that inspires them to go along with you hmm. for you to be around people who change and who grow and who their presence inspires you to do a little bit more. Hmm. And the range of motion thing for the squat is a perfect add in to this mm -hmm. because I had people come in to the gym when I used to coach in a more, what does it look like to the coach fashion? I'd had people come into the gym and they had not exercised before. They'd lived reasonably active lives outside of the gym, but they wanted to start to push themselves. And I would tell them to squat down and their hips would nearly touch the ground. And then they would stand up and their hips would nearly touch the ground and they would stand up and they would look like a child or an infant squatting and standing back up. And I told them they were squatting too deep. Oh no. <laughs> right? How does that feel right now? <laughs> right now, I'm embarrassed. <laughs> I feel sorry. <laughs> I, I feel terrible for having told them that. It was, <laughs> it was the paradigm of the, that I was in at that time. There is forgiveness, even for the coach. <laughs> <Yes. There's> forg <laughs> we yes. all are here now. We all know better, right? Yes. This is a growth process for all of us, right? Exactly. If you can forgive yourself, move past that, uh -huh. that, that there's an opportunity for us all here. That's yes. great. <laughs> so, so I saw them squat all the way down. And I said, oh, you're not, you're squatting too far. Mm. They only needed to squat until the minimum level that I said it looked below parallel to me because that's when it counts. Mm. Now... Eventually, as my eyes started to open and I started to kind of peel the reptile mask off of it and start to see things a little differently, I was like, these people had full range of motion flexibility and I was stacking strength and stamina in spite of that flexibility. Mm. They were getting stiffer and more muscle bound in order to achieve. Mm. Instead of keeping that range of motion mm -hmm. and then stacking stamina and, flex, uh, stamina and strength on top of that full range of motion, mm -hmm. which is really what we all want to be capable of. Yep. Squat 350 pounds and sit on the ground without using your hands. Yeah. yeah. That's the legit piece. S squat 350 pounds at full range of motion with your ass nearly on the ground. Exactly. And with your, uh, when you're up, being fully extended, uh -huh. being fully upright in a bone stacked on bone situation. Yes. Right? You know, just like being, being there. And all the work is to get up to that, uh -huh. to get some weight on that. Yes. And then to maximize from there exactly. without minimizing range of motion uh -huh. or keeping the weight so light 
that you'd never grow strength at the edges of that range of motion. Exactly. Yep. Yep. Perfect point there. And so what we want to do is we want to look at comparison, like we've said, ourselves now to our future selves, ourselves now to our past selves, to give us some perspective of where we are on that journey. But competition needs to not be comparing to others, Mm -hmm. but doing in a way that inspires others. Not shorting my reps so that my time is faster so that that person feels worse about themselves and going, how the hell did he go so fast? How the hell did they get so many reps? Mm -hmm. No, no. Seeing their score and knowing that they went through a full range of motion, that they've come from wherever they came from and they've gotten to that place. Oh, that's so inspiring. Mm -hmm. Great job showing up. I feel inspired to show up the next day. Let's go together. Let's, I I think that's a perfect transition here and by the way like feel free to slow this video down feel free to go back and watch because there's room for you in this video there's room for you no matter we talked a little bit on the last episode about different entry points or pain points being Mm -hmm. stuck between that rock and the hard place doesn't matter where your squad is right now Mm -hmm. because that's why you're starting this work doesn't matter where how good you are at getting down onto the ground that's why you're starting this work let's just not do work or have beliefs that feed into those limitations Mm -hmm. rather have ones that start to explore those limitations and find out what's possible with those and how seeking what's possible with those can start to dissolve those limitations start to metabolize those in ways to create more freedom rather than more ignorance illness injury Exactly. And suffering. Yeah, right? that's beautiful. Um, so let's talk about that because I, I was doing a daily original workout with somebody uh-huh. and he was like, ah, this is killing me. Uh-huh. This is killing me. And that's what I knew the workout of the day to be forever. Yes. Like I, I how many times have I puked after a workout of the day uh-huh. before I started coming and engaging the stay active method while uh-huh. I was in other CrossFit traditional gyms or adjacent gyms uh-huh. uh, every time. Right. Because that was the point. Yes. The point was to do the workout as hard as I possibly could and get to the end of my capacity. Right. But that may not have been the point the whole time. Yep. Nor is it the point or the aim of the daily original workout. Exactly. Talk talk about this thin line that seems to appear. I I heard somebody say it. I was talking with my brother-in-law. He said, Mm -hmm. he said, uh, he was like, Yeah, that workout was killing me. I was like, it was meant to be inspiring because I've got your Uh voice in my head all the time. Uh You'll have to work that out yourself. (laughs) Uh, uh, It's meant to be inspiring. He said, that's a very fine line. Uh Uh-huh. That's a very fine line. I would love to hear you address that fine line. Yeah. And why it maybe isn't so fine. Yeah. We we addressed it uh, a little bit in the episode on war and famine, Mm -hmm. uh, go back and check that out for, for an overview of what is thriving and what is suffering. Mm -hmm. But in, in essence, in our physiology is the capacity to do things that we don't want to do in order to survive for the next day. War and famine are things that we as humans can get through to get to a better day. Exercise is not war and famine. We should not be suffering through our exercise. This is a maximizing of who we can be as a physical species. This is not suffering and decay and overuse and degradation. This is growth, expansion, and opportunity. And we need to get to that place. And is it a fine line? Hell yeah. And it's a worthy goal to sit right at the edge of that line over and over and over. Mm. Now, if you had a long way to go to get to a battle, you would move at a pace where you were ready for that battle when you got there. You would march. If you knew because of all the battles you've won already that you are going to win that battle when you get there, you would march at a pace that got you to that place upright, aware, and expressive. Mm -hmm. If you were running from a battle that you were losing, you wouldn't give yourself space to move at that same pace. You'd be getting hit in the back of the head. You'd be getting knocked down. You'd be 
guarding and challenging and covering for yourself. You'd be running beyond what you really wanted to run at. You'd be moving at a pace that was beyond what you want to go at. And you would be suffering through that escape Mm -hmm. in order to get to the next day. Mm -hmm. You've lost the battle. You're retreating. You're exiting. You're releasing. You're trying to get away from. Mm -hmm. And exercise is not that. Mm -hmm. We should not be in the middle of this workout thinking the workout is killing us. Mm -hmm. What's feeling like it's killing us is our mindset saying, I should be better than I am right now. Uh, I should be better than I am right now. That's what fucking kills people. Mm -hmm. Instead of this is what I'm capable of right now. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm capable of right now over and over and over. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's great. So it's, I love that judgment. Like, the identifying of that judgment, uh-huh. like, hey, I should be, uh-huh. right, rather than I am, uh-huh. right? I should I should be doing better than this, but I am doing what I'm doing, Yes, right? And then th- once we get rid of that should, we're able to start turning the knobs on the I am, uh-huh. right? And, and w- can you give people permission to back off a uh-huh. little bit right now? Yes. Like, what words do you have for people that will allow them to know, hey, because I had people who said to me, well, I'm working out two hours. I'm wor- willing to work out three hours if it gets me that result. Uh-huh. Or I'm doing, I'm doing things at this intensity. I'm willing to, I'm willing to, you know, willing to die. Like I'm willing to do it, whatever it takes because I've got to do more in order to get better results, uh-huh. right? I've uh-huh. got to push myself harder. I've yep. got to stop being a bitch. I've got to start grinding. I've started, you know, all that yep. stuff. Yeah. Can you give them permission to? Yeah. So before you engage in each step of your exercise, you need to listen more. Mm. So you want to do more of whatever you want to do Mm. in that moment before you choose your next step, listen more. Mm. What are the signals telling you? What is your body offering you awareness of what it needs? As it offers you the awareness of what it needs, you need to be willing to give it what it needs. Mm. If you're feeling stiff, tight, tired, weak, exhausted, sad, depressed, you're in a low place, you're in an under recovered place. You do not need to crush yourself when you're already down. Mm. You don't need to take the weak parts of your spirit and smash them into the ground. You need to gently offer some encouragement to it. Mm. And so easy movement within your comfort zone when you're in that low place. You're feeling sore, achy, painful. Your body's in an inflammatory place. It's trying to heal from the push that you just did. Mm -hmm. You may have done a push perfectly prescribed, and now you've got to recover from it. Show up and do the work that it takes to recover from it. Mm -hmm. Not ripping it apart, not stretching it because it feels super tight, not kneading it while your body is sweating because you think you need to work this knot out. Mm. Feel the discomfort, sit at the edge of it, gently squeeze some inflammation out of those tissues. Mm. Find a different way to move so that you can get a few reps a little differently later. Mm. Give it the flexibility that you need to keep going. Mm. That's great. When you feel great and ready to push, that's the time to take on discomfort. Mm -hmm. It's only 30 seconds. It's only 60 seconds. At the most, it's going to be about 90 seconds. Mm -hmm. And the first 30 of that is going to feel like ready to go. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get your discomfort and you're going to offer it to yourself when you're already feeling ready to push the limit. Mm -hmm. And you're going to work your way to it so you don't blow it out in the first set so that you know where the effort is so that you can get right to that edge and really push with a lot of power. Mm. Mm. And finding ourselves in those, in those times where, uh, I, where I find my, found myself in as I was doing 24.1, uh-huh. I found myself in a place where I was holding myself back, uh-huh. right? Not, not necessarily seeing that I had more capacity on the table, and then in other workouts and other daily original workouts that I've done, I found myself, uh, I found myself going out too hard, n- seeing the re- seeing down the road, uh-huh. and like today doing twenty four point two. I was like, oh, this is not this is not for me going to be uh, going to be a short workout. This is not going to be a 
15 minute workout. This uh-huh. is going to be a 20 minute workout. Uh-huh. And if I want to be inspiring at the end, uh-huh. that means I need to moderate right here. Exactly. And as we're in those transitions, whether it's a between rep transition, between exercise transition, whatever it is, uh-huh. those transitions are times to offer ourselves a re-evaluation rather than being stuck in the past or in the future. Exactly. And you're saying in those moments where you're transitioning between exercises, uh-huh. those are the moments where you can identify what's needed and what you have to bring to it, what you have to offer to it. Exactly. That's, that's awesome. I heard somebody say a couple of weeks ago, I was sitting at a conference and he said, every transition is a baptism. Uh-huh. And I was like, well, that's a pretty heavy thing to say, but he was right. He said, it's a baptism in the way of washing away what's old and learning how to offer what's new. Yeah. Because this is not the old moment. This is not what you were doing. This is what you are doing. This Uh is not who you were. This is who you are. This is not what time it was. This is what time it is. Yes. Every transition is a baptism. It's a clearing away of what was in order to prepare the way for what's coming and and in order to make the way for what is. Exactly. And and that's a that's a beautiful thing to be able to give ourselves that time Uh inside of the workout. And it's a gift that we get to offer ourselves. And if you say too many times, if I say too many times to myself, oh, I don't have time for that, uh-huh. then how much truer will that be? Yeah. That I won't have time for that. And yeah. time for what? Me. To exist. Is the workout the most important thing? No. The workout is not the most important thing. The outcome of putting myself in a position where I'm more fit to serve. Yep right? Where I'm more useful to those yep. around me, where I have the uh, most opportune, uh, opportune situations to create and bring my creativity out into that space. Yeah. You know, that's, that's the point. And so I just want to, I just want to l- like give you that knowledge as you're out there doing it. Just practice that. This uh-huh. isn't about the workout. It's not just about this one thing, this one time. Yeah. It's like, if I do that at the exclusion of everything else, end up laying on the floor, throwing up and, guess what it's going to look like next time? Yeah. It's going to look very much the same because of the amount of recovery time. Uh And one of the things that you said is we don't have to practice. We don't have to practice survival. Uh -uh. We, we don't, we don't have to, uh, what was the other, what's the other word that you use? Endurance. We don't have to practice endurance. Uh We don't have to practice war. Uh We don't have to practice famine. Yep. We put ourselves, we use this imagery. Mm -hmm. Are you walking into, are you walking to the battle in a way that you are prepared to put a foot on the chest, Mm -hmm. (laughs) put a foot on the chest of that battle at the end of the battle? Exactly. At the end of the battle, not not be one of those people who's laying among the multiple dead bodies in your CrossFit workout space. Exactly. If you stay still enough, then the opponent won't know you're alive. Uh-huh. <laughs> right. Uh-huh. It's because that's what it looks like. It lo- every time you like a lot of times when I've gone into those group workouts, it's like it's like somebody came in and <laughs> and gunned all those people down. Yeah. And they're they're all just and they slowly come back to life yeah. after the lactic acid uh, backs out. And yeah, you, know, you know what the scene is, and yeah, and and so I just, uh, yeah, I just want to encourage encourage that space more because that space is going to be a huge benefit. Yeah, I want to offer a couple of examples, and the one is the idea of training partners mm. that are doing the same thing, mm. and I noticed this first in running, and second in watching some longer documentaries. Uh, with some high-level CrossFit athletes. Mm. When you watch two people running, doing their long run together, one's got their head up talking to the other, and there's generally one just a little bit farther behind, the head is down a little bit, the posture is slumped a little bit, and they're huffing and puffing a little more to keep up. I see, yep. Now, who's getting the stamina benefit? Who's getting the capacity to use energy more efficiently? Who's going to be capable of showing up the next day, the day after, the day after that, the week after that? It's going to be the one who is a little more capable. Who needs it less. (laughs) Well, (laughs) who is already a little farther along the journey. Way better way to put it. They're a little farther along the journey. This person is trying to keep up with this other person's journey Mm -hmm. and they're actually falling farther behind because the inefficiency that they're using to try to keep up will eventually be the inefficiency that stops them down the road. 
Mm. And so I saw that in running partners. That was when it first started to hit me. The second was watching longer term CrossFit athletes, high level CrossFit athletes who had training partners. Did their training partners make it to the CrossFit games? No. Did their training partners succeed more and more? No. Mm. Their training partners fell off. Wow. Because the program was set so that the training partner was trying to push the high level athlete. I see. The high level athlete was just working within their comfort zone more often than not. Everybody around them was working outside the comfort zone more often than not. And they ended up falling away. There was attrition because of that. Mm. What you really want to set up is that everybody is at their own particular edge. The whole tribe rises. Mm. That's when we succeed. Check out the official Unlock Potential store where inspiration meets style. Explore our exclusive collection of gear inspired by the transformational messages straight from our Unlock Potential podcast. From trendy apparel that embraces the power of positivity to accessories that fuel your motivation. We've got something for every go-getter. Spread the messages of empowerment, energy, and motivation that you get from the Unlock Potential podcast by grabbing your gear today. There it is. <laughs> like I, this is the essence of the stay active method. Mm -hmm. the, the, the idea that we're, we're not, we're not here to kill ourselves. No. We're here to grow ourselves. Yes. We're here to do that over time, mm -hmm. not just in time, mm -hmm. not just every minute on the minute, no. not just a 20 minute AM wrap, yeah. not just, a, not, we're not putting time caps on the growth. Right. That's the other thing you want to talk right. about. Do you want to talk about time caps? Go for it. Or no, no, I want you to, because I don't oh. know why you don't put time caps. I would love to know. Oh, on the workout of the day? Yeah. Workout. Oh, well, on the daily uh, original workout. Why I don't put time caps? Yeah. Uh, or why, why at least you didn't on 24.1. There was a 15 minute yeah. time cap on that. Yep. And why, why you didn't on that workout, why you chose not to put a time cap on that. Yeah, sometimes I just want to leave it open for people to be able to look at the work that they have to do mm -hmm. and then go through and finish that work. Okay. And so they know, ooh, I'm going to get all the way through this. Mm -hmm. And so that can be a daunting thing. I don't have an exit until I complete it. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, sitting with that, I got to get through it. I got to get through it. Peace. Mm -hmm. When am I going to get through it? How hard do I push so I can get through it? I leave that open for people. Gotcha. Uh, I find that it's an edge of their psyche that they get to play with. Mm. That said, I also have an edge of their psyche that I learned from the CrossFit games, which was put a chipper in and then set the time cap so that you're likely not going to be able to get through it. Or and anywhere then, close. And then be. call it four <laughs> rounds and reps. So they see the four rounds and reps and they think, oh, I'm supposed to get through this a few times. And then they're partway through as the time is finishing up. And that messes with them yeah. because they were going in thinking they were going to be cycling through. And now they're not even going to get to complete a round. And so that messes with the psyche. But at the same time is the opportunity to go, I'm going to get as much work done as I can at the pace that I can that inspires others around me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's great. That's great. I've been on the other side of some of those. I'm still hurting a little bit. <laughs> I don't need much therapy anymore, but I might need it for that when I saw rounds and reps and I got through about 75% of a round. <laughs> so, yes. all right. But uh, this is not only about pushing physical edges. This is yeah. about pushing edges, Yeah. right? Exactly. We don't need the word in front of it as a descriptor. This is about pushing edges. Yep. This is learning how to become a person who can show up uh -huh. in, in a variety of circumstances, who grows strength, through a, that variety of approaches, yes, right? And I love what you said at the beginning. We continue to stand on the shoulders of giants. Uh -huh. I would not have the perspective, we would not have the perspective nor the methodology if it wasn't for all those people who went before us in those bodybuilding exercises that yes. we might see seem antiquated now uh -huh. in some in cross training, in gymnastics, uh -huh. right? The whole CrossFit movement uh, just basic work in the gym. We get to stand atop all of that. Exactly. As, as something to say that almost right. And here's truth. Yep. And there was going to be one day, hopefully if we do our work correctly, exactly. I've where, always thought that where our shoulders are going to be strong enough 
where somebody can stand on those and say they almost had it right. Uh -huh. They almost had it right. Yeah. But in the meantime, what we're going to do is we're going to work out in a way that's supportive of a whole life, not just uh, supportive of numbers in the gym uh -huh. or uh, competition. My numbers beat this guy's numbers. Yep. But where we can measure growth appropriately in seasons and be encouraged uh, by our growth and inspire other people to say, I thought that I couldn't, but now I can. Yeah. I thought that I wasn't, but now I am. Right. And I, I don't know if I, if what I'm doing is inspiring, but I used to be at the beginning and now somebody else is starting and I can be an encouragement no matter where I am. Cause we don't start at the bottom. We start at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Right. And we don't get to the end. We just go up to the next level. Yeah. That's our opportunity. So thanks everybody for uh, plugging in. I hope you learned a lot, take a lot, watch this video multiple times. And uh, I'm so excited for you to start getting into the daily original workouts as we start to launch those for you through the app. Uh, we're, we're about midway through, I would say at this point with yeah. the application, yeah. every single meeting we have gets me more fired up. We have, we both are doing a lot of work behind the scenes, both separately and together yes. uh, to make this the best possible uh, tool for you to put this framework and methodology in your hands to help set you free from, your, from the painful past or your fear of the future. Uh, and put you into a place where you can say what I said at the beginning of uh, this episode, that I've never felt this good before. I've never had this much energy to give before, no matter what age you are, no matter where you come from, what your background is, doesn't matter. It's inside of you, we'll help you get to it. Instant message us, like, subscribe, follow what we're doing. Uh, we're continuing to build community and you're a part of it. Thanks. Thanks, Corey. Yeah, brother. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Unlock Potential. For exclusive content, make sure to subscribe to our Patreon. Follow us across all socials at The Brian Delaney and visit our website at thebriandelaney.com to shop our gear and see what's coming up next.